You know, I wasn't sure it was going to end this way, but I kind of had a feeling. Silicon Valley Bank placed under U.S. government control following collapse. Shares of the bank dropped by 60% on March 9th, prompting concern among its clients. There was a run on this bank, and it has failed. It is the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. The U.S. government is taking control. They are saying that, don't worry, you will be able to access your deposits. And I kind of think this all happened because of wokeness. Yeah, maybe not completely, but this bank was really touting its Silicon Valley diversity actions. And I kind of feel like maybe if you invested your time and energy into, I don't know, running your business properly, it would not have collapsed. But hey, maybe not. I kind of think of this as a sort of get woke, go broke because it hit Silicon Valley first, just the way they operate. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got news for you. Another bank has collapsed. Signature Bank of New York becomes the next casualty of banking turmoil after Silicon Valley Bank, the third largest banking failure in U.S. history. Oh boy, could this be the big one? Maybe. We're hearing there's going to be no bailouts. They're not going to save these banks, not this time. But for those who have money in these banks, at least for Silicon Valley Bank, you'll be able to get your money out. So the first thing I want to say is, okay, well, the first thing I want to say is, get woke, go broke. Or how about get woke, effing nuke the entire financial sector. I mean, that's, that's more of a, you know, just a, a playful rib at the woke left for their ridiculousness and their chaos and their, and their woke cult garbage. I'm not entirely convinced wokeness is the, is the cause of this collapse. But I want to say this legitimately and, and, and first and foremost. When uh, Steve Bannon came on the show on Friday, we had reps, uh, uh, Gates and Bishop, and we were talking about Silicon Valley Bank bailouts and what's going to happen. Steve said they're going to come to you, to, to Gates and Bishop. They're going to, to tell you, you have to do this. You have to bail these banks out. They're going to call it a contagion that must be stopped and you have to resist. And sure enough, Andrew Yang that day had tweeted, this is a contagion that must be stopped. It will wipe out a generation of startups. Young people will lose their jobs. I'm going to tell you, my friends, the most important thing. I think y'all be fine. I, I really do. It may get bad to a certain degree, but I don't think the apocalypse will happen. Although I can tell you this, we are feeling it. You know, we get we get emails from time to time from people being like, economy is just getting real bad for us. Sorry, we're, we're, you know, canceling our membership or something like that. For the most part, we are fine, but I can certainly see the revenue taking a hit. And with these two banks, the second and third largest collapse in U.S. history happening in rapid succession, I gotta say, I'm a bit worried. So what I will say is I do think you will be fine. I'm not so sure it's going to be the apocalypse, but... That's not a, it's not strong confidence. I gotta be, I gotta be honest. I do personally feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We hear the news. Everyone's going to whinge about it. And they're going to say, oh, it's the apocalypse. Oh, we need bailouts. And in the end, we'll make our way through it and it may get bad, but I don't think it's the apocalypse. However, it may be the apocalypse because like I'm saying, the second and third largest bank failures in history literally just happened. My friends, today is a historical moment. Understand this. Maybe people don't, care much about what happens with banks. But I'll tell you right now, over the past few months, I've been looking at ad rates. I've been talking with other people who uh, work in media and they say, yeah, ad rates have been low. And it's interesting because they should be improving. Then you get something like this and it's like, oh boy, I'm not surprised that under Joe Biden, we may be experiencing one of the worst economic hits in history. Since 2008, they have a, they put a bandaid on a bullet wound and you can see the money supply spiking. So again, I think y'all will be fine. I'm not so sure it's going to get as bad as, I, I don't know, apocalyptic. And, and, I, and I really don't want to come out and say, run for the hills, everybody, the end is nigh, for, for two reasons. One, I'm not so sure you have to. I don't know how bad it's going to be. And I mean, the last thing I want to do is get people to panic. So what happens is Silicon Valley, people lost confidence in the bank and they, 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 there's a run on the bank. They all pull, try pulling their deposits, bank collapses. So... I will additionally add, head over to TimCast.com, click that join us button, become a member if you want to support our work, because that's the only reason I'm able to make these videos and this company is able to operate. 
We do get ad revenue. YouTube obviously makes ad revenue, but it does not cover the cost of running this business. We exist because we have members who believe in us. So if you like the work we're doing in terms of commentary culture and you know everything else, become a member. And if you don't, we don't deserve your membership. And to be honest, maybe we don't deserve to exist. That's capitalism. But I think we do. And I think we're doing moderately well. And I'm not sure everybody has the ability to become a member. I'll just say that uh, we rely on it, especially now. So do what's right for you. Don't exert yourself just to, you know, become a member for our, for, at TimCast.com. But we are working behind the scenes very, very hard to create incentives like the Discord server where y'all can hang out and talk to us and members of the crew and uh, behind the scenes content. Of course, we have the members only show from TimCast IRL. Smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share these videos. Let's read the story first to give you some general understanding of the Signature Valley Bank crisis. The United States federal government took control of the Silicon Valley Bank, a financial institution used by half of venture-backed technology and, sci- and life science companies in America. It's the second largest bank failure since Washington Mutual in 2008. We got news this morning. Oh, man. Signature Bank becomes the next casualty of banking turmoil after SVB. State regulators closed New York-based Signature Bank. On Sunday, the third largest uh, failure in U.S. banking history, two days after Silicon Valley Bank was shuttered in a collapse that stranded billions in deposits. They're saying something like 85 percent of the money in SVB was not insured. The FDIC took control of Signature, which had $110 billion in assets and $88 billion in deposits at the end of last year, according to New York State's Departments of Financial Services. All the depositors of Signature Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank will be made whole and no losses will be borne by the taxpayer, the U.S. Treasury Department and other bank regulators said in a joint statement. They're lying that what they're offering is impossible. So everyone's posting this meme of uh, from The Simpsons where Bart goes to a bank and he goes behind someone and says, what do you mean the bank's out of money? What? You only have enough money for the next three customers. And then everyone starts banging on the glass and screaming. The bank manager comes out and he goes, well, of course I don't have your money here. It's in Frank's house and and John's house. And then Moe's like, Frank, what are you doing with my money? And punches him. (laughs) Ha ha. The joke is the money is invested in hard assets. When people deposit money in the bank, the bank uses the money to make investments. That's not necessarily how it works because... You know, since since 2020, we've been in an infinite reserve system where banks are just willy nilly snapping their fingers and creating money on the spot. So I, I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, man, maybe I'm being a little bit too optimistic when I say that everything's going to be fine. But I just I can't find it in my heart of hearts to think that the apocalypse is really going to happen right now and over this. But to be fair, the second and third largest bank failure in U.S. history just happened in rapid succession. So uh, there we are. Employees appear to gather at the company's Manhattan headquarters for meetings on Sunday, ordering catering from Carmine's, an Italian restaurant. That sounds pretty good. And Starbucks coffee. According to a Reuters reporter on the scene, people trickled out of the building after news of the closure was announced. Representatives for the lender did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Signature's failure followed Silicon Valley Bank's Friday shutdown, the second largest in U.S. history. Investors were unnerved by the speed at which SVB uh, was toppled by customer withdrawals. The episode last week erased more than $100 billion in market value from the U.S. The FDIC established a bridge successor bank on Sunday, which will enable customers to access their funds on Monday. So this is, what are they calling it? It's called like the Deposit National Bank or whatever. I don't know, whatever. Signature was a commercial bank with private client offices in New York, Connecticut, etc., as of September, almost a quarter of its deposits came from cryptocurrency. Woo! Bitcoin gonna get hit. But the bank announced in December that it would shrink its crypto-related deposits by $8 billion. All right, everybody. I can't tell you what to expect. I can't tell you what to do. I'm probably, uh, this is just me. I'm gonna do nothing. I am going to tell everybody, if you can, it's 10 bucks a month to be a member at TimCast.com. But uh, I'm a bit worried, to be completely honest. Kind of feel like things will be fine, but based on the way things have been going generally with the economy, food shortages, price increases, infinite reserve banking, now this, 
I'm thinking to myself, oh, oh, oh boy. I'm worried. Uh, here's what happens. Here's what I believe we are seeing right now. In 2020, around this time, you know, March or so, ad revenue for us tanked. Small businesses were being shut down by governments. And so they stopped advertising. And all of those micro advertisements add up. And that's what funds a channel like this. Not 100%. For, for me in this work, easily, yes, hands down. But this is one component of a larger company. And the revenue from this goes to helping other parts of the machine operate. If I were to lay everybody off, shut everything down, and just go into my closet and do this show where I just talk on the internet, I'd be doing pretty well. But I'm watching ad rates drop. And that says to me that businesses are starting to hurt. And following two of the biggest bank failures in U.S. history, I anticipate we're going to see something similar when we're already seeing ad rates drop. Not completely. They are improving a little bit. Don't get me wrong. But they should be improving more. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. What I do know is this. Silicon Valley Bank, they're big fans of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Good for them. And they have this, uh, this workplace diversity metrics. I wonder how much money they spent on this insane garbage. I don't know that this is the reason that it failed. But I have to say, if you prioritize diversity over meritocracy, you will collapse. It's like starting a business that, I don't know, a car wash, but then replacing the main office or putting a main office where it's like a church. And it's like, well, I know people want to come in here and get their cars washed, but we're having church sermon right now. Well, I get it. Y'all, well, I'm, I'm sure many people are going to say, hey, don't compare the two. Okay. My point is just this. I'm trying to, to give you an understanding for those who may recognize there's no, there's, there, there's no overlap for these two things. You're running a business, not a church. A church can be a church. You could be a business. If the universities want to preach wokeness, they can, but a business shouldn't be. I mean, you can certainly have some component in your business, I guess. But these businesses have been heavily investing in diversity over meritocracy. And we have seen this for a long time. And I'm not surprised that a company that's like, look at the racial breakdown of our staff. I also want to point out that they're like, Diversity is very important here, and 8% of their uh, board, 92% is white, 8% is black. And it's like, did you just hire like a black guy so you can claim that? And then it's 52% women, 58% men. Uh Uh-oh. Total workforce is 54% men, 46% women. Senior leadership is 62% men, 38% women. They want to make sure everybody knows just how hard they fight for diversity, equity, inclusion to the point where they have drafted numerous reports on their diversity, equity. Look at this. Diversity, equity, inclusion at Silicon Valley Bank. Diversity, equity, inclusion and, and access. Oh, it's, so it's DEA now. Here's another one. These are all different. These are PDF files. They create like August 2020 report. They make they, they have people working to do this. Look at this. Silicon Valley Bank pushed woke programs day before collapse. Bravo, bravo. A head of risk management at Silicon Valley Bank spent considerable time spearheading multiple woke LGBTQ plus programs, including a safe spaces for coming out stories as the firm raced towards collapse. Because maybe a bank should be focused on protecting people's investments and investing properly instead of teaching people about being LGBTQ plus. That's just me. That's what I think. Okay, well, good for all of you. Thomas Massey, just let me let me let me zoom in on this. He says, just got off a Zoom meeting with the Fed, Treasury, FDIC, House and uh, and Senate. A Democrat senator essentially asked whether there was a program in place to censor information on social media that could lead to a run on the banks. I don't know, man. That's the last thing I want. I got my money in a bank. I will say, however, about six months ago, maybe eight months ago, I was talking to a buddy of mine, somebody who's been on this show several times, and uh, he was like, you got to get your crypto out of the exchanges and, you know, pay attention to what's going to happen with these exchanges because blah, 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 blah. And so I was like, okay, so I got my cryptocurrency off the exchanges. Probably a good move because now we're hearing the collapse of SVB. It's going to be affecting 
I'll keep it simple for those that aren't super into crypto. There's going to be a ripple effect that's going to have a negative impact on cryptocurrencies. And the exchanges may be in serious trouble. And if the exchanges go down, crypto itself will take a major hit. We will see. However, I also had someone tell me about a year ago, do what you can to start getting some cash out of the bank and converting your cash into some kind of immutable value system. I don't want to say gold and silver necessarily, but uh, to a certain degree. And so I've been periodically just taking a little bit out of the bank and I've, I've been moving it into things that are of value. Actually, I mean, this has been going on for a couple of years because we talked about this on Timcast IRL. And I've talked about it with you guys. What's the most common household item that would be very difficult to synthesize? And I think antiseptics, maybe not. People talk about alcohol is actually not that difficult to synthesize, like wood alcohol or something. And you can use that as an antiseptic. And it's like, yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's funny to me, like they didn't pour whiskey on someone's wounds back in the day. They just amputated the leg. But uh, maybe whiskey wasn't strong enough. I don't know. Because I think antiseptics are way stronger in terms of the alcohol content. But anyway, I, I, maybe you could distill the alcohol or something. Anyway, I digress. I have been, um, what I would say, investing, I would in, investing in um, self-sustainable resources, uh, solar power, something like that. Uh, solar, small solar battery generators are big because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not saying the world's going to collapse, but when you see the fighting, when you see what's going on in Atlanta. So let me just break this down for you. And I know a lot of people are going to whinge. Now, let me, let me break it down for you, my friends. We talk about civil war, civil unrest, the fourth turning. We are dealing with the second and third largest, finan- uh, largest banking industry collapse in U.S. history in the span of a couple days. We are hoping that the, the, the bleed just stops, that it ends here. I'm not so sure it will. And I do not believe a bailout would actually do anything at all. In fact, the reason why they're saying, <clears throat> excuse me, there won't be a bailout is because they can't do it. They did a bailout in 2008. Didn't work. It stemmed the bleed, but they put a bandaid on a bullet wound. And so you can see when you look at the money supply, it starts going up. And then 2020, it spikes like a hockey stick. So at this point, they're probably saying we can't do the same thing twice. The massive bailout ripped buying power from the American middle class from Americans in general. Another bailout of that magnitude will do the same thing. This means that if you have $100 in your bank, and that's enough to get you groceries for the week, after these bailouts, for some reason, that $100 won't go far enough anymore. And we're already seeing six to 12 bucks for a carton of eggs. People want to get eggs for breakfast? Can't do it. Some places don't even have the eggs. So it may be that no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody wants to happen, this goes back to 2008. And they held it off for 15 years. Gave some of you a good life. But maybe it's just the time is due. Andrew Yang tweeted this. I think either California or the Treasury Department should backstop Silicon Valley Bank. Thousands of companies will fold or lay people off next week because of lack of access to, to accounts through no fault of their own. Take the equity and fire the managers. But SVB's clients, maybe many biotech, are important for national innovation competitiveness. Plus, you need to instill trust and reduce financial contagion, panic, and further runs. There's a big difference between irresponsible bank managers and the thousands of customers, blah, blah, blah. So as you can see, he's, he's already calling it a contagion, calling for a backstop. The federal government is going to s- secure everyone's deposits. They created something called like the, the uh, what is it? What is it? The deposit... Um, Maybe they have it in here, Deposit National Investment Fund or some whatever. I don't know. Let me, let me actually, I think I, I think I can pull it up right here. Let me get it real quick because uh, I did have it. Deposit Insurance National Bank of Santa Clara has been created. So everybody's going to have their money. I'm not sure. Look at this. Uh, the de- a Deposit Insurance National Bank is a temporary bank in the U.S. established by the FDIC in the wake of a bank failure. So there you go. All right. Biden is going to address the nation on bank failures and vows to hold those responsible fully accountable. All right. I think we're probably going to be okay. But my question to you is, do you trust him? My fear is, I'm going to be real with everybody. I'm going to be real. A run of the banks would be bad for all of us. 
We don't want that. What we also don't want is the media playing the game they often play. Right before 2008, you get people like, I think it was like Jim Cramer or whatever. All these people are saying things like, invest, invest, everything's fine. I'm saying, grand slam, when you invest in this, the banks are doing great, buddy. And I wonder if the reason they were saying that is because the Titanic had hit an iceberg. The, 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 the officers on board started gathering up whatever supplies they could, telling everybody everything is fine. You should go have a drink and enjoy the night. And they all ran to the lifeboats, lowered themselves out and said, we out, we ain't dying. And then a lot of other people did. So this is my fear. That if you go on a YouTube channel like mine and get, you know, 100, 200, 300,000 views or whatever on a video like this where I'm like, I think it's sinking. I think it's the end. That causes the panic. And then if everybody runs out and starts ripping their money out of banks, then you get a run on the banks. That screws it up for everybody. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm torn. Um, because you're going to get the media lying to you because they don't want to run in the banks. But what do you do? What do I do? Do we say for the betterment of this country, we just tell everybody everything's going to be fine, not to worry about it? I don't have the answers for you, my friends. I can tell you one thing, though. I don't play those games. You decide for yourself what you think makes sense. And I think the end result is unfortunate. We have two, the second and third largest bank failure in U.S. history. I think that means people are going to feel insecure in their, in their deposits, and they're going to want to get their money out. Now, hold on there. These tech sector banks are very, very different from major banks. Silicon Valley Bank and Signature, my understanding, are tech sector. So when the tech sector gets hit, they get hit hard. But like Chase and Bank of America, they've got investments and everything in tons of other places. So they're probably not even noticing this right now. I think mostly we may be fine. And of course, you're going to see people in California. You're going to see people like Andrew Yang be like, please give us money and insure us because we don't want these businesses to fail. And as Bannon said, they're going to come out and be like, China will take over. We need these investments. We need tech. And my attitude is let Silicon Valley rot to its core. Let it ripple and collapse and protect the working class in this country. That's a change that will be better for us in the long run. So good, I say. Get woke, go broke, signature, uh, Sil- Silicon Valley Bank. I don't know about signature. Get woke, go broke. Just get ready and pay attention. Because as much as I say you don't want to run in the banks, I can't tell you what other people are going to do. And apparently they're already doing it on a couple banks. So I don't know what that's going to mean for everybody else. But if it's going to get as bad as 2008, I want to make sure you know this. I'm probably not going to do anything. Like, I'm, I'm not going to take stocks. I'm not going to sell stock. Because there was something that happened where, like, I was reading an article that said if you, if you had stocks in 2008 when the market collapsed and you did nothing, you rebounded like two or threefold within three years. But the people who panicked and sold everything off lost everything. The market grows. It usually recovers. And I don't think the apocalypse is here, but uh, I don't know, man. Maybe, 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 maybe get what go broke and there's, there's nothing else to be said. So we'll see. We will see. Biden's going to address the nation. We'll have more updates on this later. There's a lot of stuff going on. We got January 6th news. Hope you all had a good weekend. Please become a member at TimCast.com if you want to support our work, because uh, that's what keeps the boat afloatin'. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.